Auxerre in central France, possibly the nicest city you've never heard of. So many churches and cathedrals, so little time seems appropriate. I know many of you may have had vacations using a similar phrase in a slightly different way, perhaps, by our But many of us enjoy having a little poke around a church or a cathedral when we're in a town. A lot of people like to plan according to visiting a particular type of cathedral. It's perfectly understandable. There's an awful lot of workmanship goes into them. Whether you can say that you like the story behind the cathedrals, I'm not too sure. They're all such brutal stories, aren't they? No. The beheading of John the Baptist. I mean, I've heard of John the Baptist before, but I never knew he was beheaded. Obviously, with any saint, there's going to be lots of churches that claim to have parts of his anatomy amongst their relics. Some more plausible than others, that fingers that plunged Jesus into the sea for the baptism. But who's got the head most plausibly? Appreciation of the architectural styles must be a bigger thing these days than pilgrimages to the relics, though, I think. From my university architecture history studies, part of the course, Chartres and its intestines like uh, floor, entrance and vestibule thing was one of the most important ones in terms of the development of particular styles and what was influencing uh, British architecture. Fair chance it was the same workman. Germanus of Oxair was a early missionary to Britain from what was still almost essentially the Roman world of Christendom. I was sharing with you how Lyon on the River Rhone was the centre for the three Gauls for the Romans. The three Gauls. There was only one, France. It was in that early Roman Christian crossover period that the Egyptian who was to become Saint Maurice was summoned towards Auxerre by the Roman commanders. Fairly unusual for Egypt, but not for Roman Egypt of the time. Um, he was um, Christian and he'd um, got together his legion as he was promoted, and it consisted mainly of Christians. Nepotism, no surprise there in the fall of Rome period. Rome wouldn't usually get neighbour to fight neighbour, so from one end of the empire to the other, pretty much. And they got this Maurice fellow and his legion to clear the path over the San Bernardino Pass, the Col San Bernard, over the Alps. So, I'm sorry, I don't know whether they were clearing rocks off a sort of a track, sort of building a bit of a road, I think. I don't know if they were clearing snow, sorry. But you've been brought a long way and you're up in the, from a hot place to a cold place up in the Alps mountains. You're not going to be, might be feeling a little bit defiant, but when he was to become Saint Maurice, was ordered to kill a load of Christians, local French Christians, he refused. It'll be no surprise to you that he was martyred. We're a long way from the Alps though, and while Borg Saint Maurice in the Alps is very local to where I live, on the Isère River, the city of Auxerre on the Yonne River is on the furthest extremities west of the Burgundy region. I'm sure Chablis wine was popular and brought in a fair amount of scudo back then, but in that period, between 400 and 1,000 years of theological argument and a centre for learning more generally, and even hospital, sort of, was what Auxerre was known for. And the saint that a church or a cathedral is named after now isn't necessarily how it started off. The cathedral of The saint that a church or a cathedral is named after now isn't necessarily how it started off. The cathedral of Saint Etienne, 11th century, the 10 hundreds, has its very early Romanesque cathedral, remains under the Gothic style, down in the crypt. But it was the abbey of Saint Germain 
in Auxerre that existed from the 800s. That crypt has some of the oldest mural paintings in France and the tombs of the bishops of Auxerre, one of whom, who got the job and got the cathedral by putting up much of the money himself and setting a good example. He did this in other towns as well. Once you've got that flagship, it's much easier to get the rest of the investment. The Pope in Rome was installing the primates of Gaul, and the primates of France is something that's stuck to this day as a prestige religious title. There's a drama or two, a box set or two of um, the Knights Templar, not so much about the Knights Hospitaller, but they were just as an important parallel group of knights. I'd never heard of these when I started my architecture course, but of course, during the Crusades, they were able to inspire donations from the feudal lords and the kings throughout Europe to go and claim the Holy Land for Christendom. Byzantium and the Ottomans had something to say about this. They managed to... this, they managed to get back their traditional lands. And over the centuries, a sort of hypocrisy agreement of trade, a sort of entente cordiale, possibly, grew up between the courts of Europe and the Ottoman Empire. The Knights Templar, which had been amazing at setting up banks so that a crusading knight could deposit some money, money in Paris, perhaps. France was big for the centuries during the crusading era and beyond. And then that same knight could then withdraw the deposited money, just like a bank pretty much, but in Jerusalem or any number of Templar places. The Knights of Hospitaller, as they've always been known to me, it's slightly different they tended to concentrate initially on the very important healthcare-like services and hospital, which came in increasing demand as the Crusades started to fail. As the Crusades failed, the contributions from the ports of Europe tended to dwindle, rather than the other way round. These Knights Hospitaller, which are more commonly known as the Knights of St John, St John the Baptist, who he was a sort of forerunner of Jesus. I read something about his cousin. It wasn't really about his cousin. Was John the Baptist the real deal? And Jesus was the copycat band, the tribute band. I'm sure for some schools of theological thought that call themselves religions, I've just committed a mortal sin. I'll put myself forward as a martyr of sanity and reason. Reason may be a short-term highest achievement of the entire universe, according to the Gospel of Professor Cox. No. Knights have taken vows and they're committed to a simple life. The Abbey, one of the centres of learning, there is in Paris a spin-off cathedral of St John of Auxerre, which was eventually to give rise to the University of St John in Paris. With their initial reason for being sort of fallen by the wayside, they weren't, these Knights of St John weren't off to the Holy Land anymore. They found a new purpose in sailing the Mediterranean, sort of policing it. This is a type of policing that Americans might be more familiar with. The Knights of St John were given powers by the European powers to stop and search any Ottoman Turkish vessel, vessel or ship, any ship really, that they considered might be carrying Turkish goods of any type. This is in the days of the Barbary pirates, the Ottoman corsairs, the Knights of St John were the early privateers of the Mediterranean. With the dwindling charity contributions from the European governments, times were hard. They had huge amounts of property and islands of Malta and roads to maintain, and this just didn't come cheap. The Knights of St John wrote a begging letter to the French king. It said how some upstart Protestants in German sort of area had captured some of their things, and it's only the Spanish and the French that are now making any real contributions to our cause. 
the Knights of St. John were a very useful professional body of sailors that could be used in the French Navy. Over time, it was only really through them that the French Navy was able to hold its own amongst the Spain and the Portugal-Holland family alliance. And good old Elizabeth I and Henry before him with his eight wives in ambition, the eight priors that ministered the eight tongues of Europe that made up the order of St. John were getting increasingly dominated by the French. Lang. And these more or less monastic knights of St. John were becoming increasingly decadent, much more like sailors letting themselves loose in every port. Their great wealth was getting squandered on wine whipping and song, and their stop-and-search policy was really getting stretched to the thinnest of excuses. Culturally, the mausoleum of Moor, the guy that gave us the word mausoleum, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, was torn down to strengthen the ramparts of a intangible defence point, Podrum. The moral decline of the knights and going off to serve in foreign navies, the mercenary sea dogs of the 1300s to the 1600s, divorced from their cardinal reason for existence inflated with wealth, laden with privileges, which gave them almost sovereign powers, the Order of St John at last became so demoralised with luxury and idleness that it forgot the aim for which it was founded, and gave itself up for the love of gain and thirst for pleasure. Its covetousness and pride soon became boundless. The knights pretended that they were above the reach of crowned heads and nation-states they seized and pillaged without concern of the property of both infidels and Christians. The Knights of St John's exploits grew in fame and wealth. The complacent European states that no longer contributed to keep order in the Mediterranean meant that the order's raids had to increase, and it was the captured merchants and crew that they could enslave and kidnap for extortionate ransoms that brought the most income. Architecturally, Vista has always meant to be a good view, to be designed in, but Vista was originally the name for the stop and search policy. Over eager, many nations suffered, and they started to turn on the Knights of St John. The rampant overindulgence of privateering in the Mediterranean, they were no longer the military outpost of a united Christendom. It just became another nation-state in a commercially orientated continent, soon to be overtaken by the traded nations of the North Sea, the Dutch and the British. British dissolution of the monasteries and later Napoleon and his expansions confiscated from the order of Hospitaller and St John, so that it became almost a relic of itself and a symbol more than a sign. The eight-pointed cross, the Maltese cross, white on black, and the white cross on a red background, just like the Savoie flag. The symbols and the terminologies like Grand Master are still proudly used by some that want to hark back to a unified authority. These are establishment figures that have little more ethics than Jack Sparrow and his dad, the privateer pirates. But we're visiting Auxerre, and St Etienne is relevant. St Stephen, but also there's a place of St Nicholas, St Nicholas Square. It would be a good time to visit there. The long, low winter sun looks beautiful all the time, reflecting in the water of the River Yon.
Thank you.